Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Micah. You guys are rocking with me on Michael's Intellectual Corner. Today, on today's video, we're going to go ahead and do another uh, Kurtz video. This time we're going to do Chinooka City. We're going to go jump right into this one. But before we do, just real quick, any type of video you guys want me to react on, I promise you, just leave a comment below and I promise you I will get back onto it. Uh, with that being said, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Let's roll. Playing around with nuclear weapons in videos is fun. There's a visceral joy in blowing things up and a horrifying fascination with things like fireballs, shockwaves and radiation. And while it does help put our destructive power in perspective, it's not the best way of understanding the real impact of a nuclear explosion. This isn't about silly stacks of TNT or about how bright an explosion is. Nuclear weapons are about you. So we've partnered with the Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement to explore what would really happen if a nuclear weapon were detonated in a major city today. Not nuclear war, just one explosion. We begin our story in the middle of downtown in a major city. People are going to work, studying for exams, are lost in their thoughts and daily lives. Right here, a nuclear weapon is detonated and time freezes. The first phase of the explosion happens within less than a second. In a millisecond, a ball of plasma hotter than the sun appears and grows in a fireball to more than two kilometers across. Within this ball, everyone is just gone. Think of water dripped onto a very hot pan, a sizzle, and then there's nothing. Most buildings, cars, trees, tacky sculptures, and people, all evaporated. Real quick, so this will be my uh, my first stop. So just to let you guys like you know get a, a sense of how hot that really is, because you know he says it's hotter than the sun, but in a blink of an eye, this ball of plasma can get up to about forty nine million degrees Celsius. That's about 90 million degrees Fahrenheit in a blink of an eye, like that. That's why any and everything evaporates. That's how hot it gets. Just for reference, the sun is only about 5,000 Celsius to about 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That, that's kind of scary, but that's a really quick death though. But yeah, let's keep it going. First, the flash, an intense tsunami of light, washes over the city in an instant. If you happen to have your head pointed in the direction of the explosion, it renders you blind for a few hours. The heat of this light produces a thermal pulse, so energetic and hot that it just burns everything as far as 13 kilometers from the detonation site. What this means is that everything in an area of 500 square kilometers that is able to burn, starts burning. Plastic, wood, fabric, hair, and skin. If you happen to be in reach of Real quick, just to let you guys know, now the pulse is more close to the sun's temperature. That's about, uh, on average, about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Still about uh, double the sun's temperature on the surface, but closer to it, or about 5,726 degrees uh, Celsius. But that is how uh, intense this uh, pulse is. That's why everything that can, will, catch fire, yeah, is pure evil. <laughs> Let's roll. One moment you're on your way to work, the next moment you're on fire. Now the second phase begins. It happens in a few seconds. Most people will now first notice that something is wrong, but it's already too late for hundreds of thousands. The flash is followed by the shock wave. The heat and radiation of the fireball create a bubble of superheated and super compressed air around it that's now expanding explosively faster than the speed of sound, creating winds stronger than hurricanes and tornadoes. Human infrastructure is no match for its power. Most major buildings within a kilometer of the fireball are just ground up down to their base. Only steel reinforced concrete is able to partially resist the pressure. In the surrounding parks where retirees feed the ducks, trees blackened and smoldering from the heat a second before snap like toothpicks. If so just real quick, just to let you guys know, those winds can usually get up to about 163 to about 934 miles per hour on average. You know, obviously, ladder being the uh, the on, on the uh, extreme end. 
Yeah, ain't nothing surprising that. You know what I'm saying? That is ridiculous. That's like hurricane type shit. You know what I'm saying? That is ridiculous. Way like a grain of dust in a tornado. The shock wave weakens as it travels outwards, but still, about 175 square kilometers of houses collapse like they're made of cards, trapping tens of thousands of people who didn't have any time to react. Gas stations explode and fires spread throughout the rubble. A mushroom cloud made from the remains of the fireball, dust and ash rises kilometers into the sky in the next few minutes and casts a dark shadow over the ruined city. This violently pulls in fresh air surrounding the city, destroying more buildings and providing an abundance of oxygen. It depends on the city what happens next. If there's enough fuel... Now, on average, the uh, mushroom cloud that is produced by even a, an average um, size bomb that he's saying or talking about in this video, it's going to be over like 33,000 uh, feet, close to about 10,000 meters in the air. You know what I'm saying? That thing looks like a mountain in the air. That is very intimidating. And yeah, you're going to see it from miles, miles, miles or kilometers away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. May turn into a firestorm that burns the rubble, everybody trapped in it, and people trying to flee the devastation. Up to 21 kilometers from the explosion, people just like you rush to their windows to take pictures of the mushroom cloud, unaware that the shockwave is still coming at them, about to shatter their windows and create a blizzard of sharp glass. The third phase begins in the coming hours and days. We're used to the idea that help will come, no matter the disaster. This time is different. A nuclear explosion is like every natural disaster at once. You know what's crazy too? Again, he's just talking about an average size bomb. Can you imagine something like Tsar Bomba? You know what I'm saying? That on that, just for so you guys know, is the biggest, uh, I think, hydrogen bomb, uh, atomic bomb. But it's the biggest freaking, essentially, bomb that has ever been made by uh, the USSR. Can you imagine the stuff that humans come up with to, to hurt other humans is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Or millions of people with serious injuries, lacerations, broken bones, serious burns. In the next few minutes and hours, thousands more will die because of these injuries. Countless people are trapped in collapsed buildings like in earthquakes or blinded by the flash, deaf from the blast wave and unable to flee through streets impassable with rubble and debris. They're terrified, confused and don't know what's happened to them or why. Most likely, many hospitals have been leveled along with all the other buildings, and most medical professionals are either dead or injured along with everyone else. The survivors lucky enough to have been in metro tunnels or standing in the right place to be unburned and unhurt won't have truly escaped harm yet. Depending on the type of weapon, where it explodes, and even the weather, an awful black rain can begin, with radioactive ash and dust descending on the city, covering everything and everyone. The invisible, malicious, silent horror of radiation takes its turn. Every breath carries poison to the lungs of the survivors. Over the coming days, the people who receive the highest doses of radiation exposure will die. There will be no help, not for hours or maybe even days. Civilization doesn't operate when there is a total breakdown of infrastructure. Roads are blocked, train tracks warped, runways cluttered with rubble. No water, no electricity, no communication, no stores to replenish supplies from. Help from surrounding cities will have a hard time entering the disaster. Yeah, can you guys imagine? It never really occurred to us, like, what do we do if there is a total breakdown of all, you know, ways of traveling, of um, driving? What if the runway is all messed up um, and filled with debris? Uh, you know, all types of stuff, you know, like, what, what, what do we do? I guess that's what, um, I guess that's whenever we start answering those questions is when we start to uh, compel or, or propel ourselves into uh, the future more, I guess, as they say. The zone, and even if they can, the radioactive contamination will make it risky to get too close. After a nuclear attack, you're on your own. So, bit by bit, people emerge from the rubble, on foot, contaminated with radioactive fallout, carrying what little they may have left. They are slow, in pain, traumatized, and they all need food, water. It's almost like we made our own freaking uh, zombie movie, huh? This is about the closest uh, we, we can probably get if we want to make zombies a reality, like, 
gosh, damn. Imagine multiple cities doing this. Water and medical treatment fast. And the damage done by a nuclear weapon doesn't end when the fires burn out and the smoke clears. The hospitals in the neighboring cities are under-equipped for a disaster of this scale and overwhelmed with tens or hundreds of thousands of patients with serious injuries. In the weeks, months and years to come, many of those who survived will succumb to cancers like leukemia. The reason no government wants you to think about all this is because there is no serious humanitarian response possible to a nuclear explosion. There's no way to really help the immediate victims. Could you imagine if this happened to in like a, for a huge densely populated city like Los Angeles, New York, any city in freaking India, you know what I'm saying? Uh, China, all the, you know what I'm saying? Tokyo, all these super huge, you know, gosh, damn. Victims of a nuclear attack. This is not a hurricane, wildfire or earthquake or nuclear accident. It is all of these things at once, but worse. No nation on earth is prepared to deal with it. The world has changed in the past few years, with world leaders again explicitly and publicly threatening each other with nuclear weapons. Many experts think the danger of a nuclear strike is higher than it has been in decades. Governments tell their citizens that it's good that we have nuclear weapons, but it's bad when anyone else gets them. That it's somehow necessary to threaten others with mass destruction to keep us safe. But does this make you feel safe? It only takes a small group of people with power to go crazy or rogue, a small misstep or a simple misunderstanding to unleash a catastrophe of unimaginable proportions. Exploding stuff in videos is fun. Exploding things in real life, not so much. Hell no, it doesn't make me feel safe because at the end of the day, pretty sure everybody has freaking the doctor and mad already in place. If anybody freaking shoots one missile, everybody's shooting off all missiles. Uh, like, come on, guys. I mean, obviously, they don't even feel safe with themselves. That's why they start de to destruct these things. But, you know, it was wrong. There is a solution, though. Eliminating all nuclear weapons and vowing never to build them again. In 2017, almost two-thirds of all the world's countries, supported by hundreds of civil society organizations and the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, agreed to prohibit and eliminate nuclear weapons. It's not about who has nuclear weapons and who doesn't. The weapons themselves are the problem. They are deeply immoral and an existential threat to all of us. No matter what country you come from, no matter what political side you find yourself on, we need to demand that they disappear forever. This will not happen without pressure. If you want to be part of this pressure, there are things you personally can do too. Visit notonukes.org to learn more about nuclear weapons and what you can do about them. All right, guys. With that, I totally, one hundred percent agree. We that is one nasty uh, weapon. Yeah, guys. I really enjoy doing these videos. Please, please, please. If you have any type of um, video that you suggest that I do, please leave a comment below. I promise you, I'll get back to you. On top of that. I will also uh, add you that video suggestion to my video uh, or whatever you want to call it. And you will be seeing that pretty much coming up in uh, the next probably two, two, three videos. I said, please like, comment, subscribe, all that. Please, I appreciate you guys' love, all that support. With that being said, I'm out. Peace.